And we're live on the twitch.tv slash the Asuma. The Bananas are in chat from May School. Forgill, Becca, Neela Flowers, thank you so much. Mm, excuse me, burping. <laughs> Just had my breakfast. Now I'm ready for a stream. Look at this thing. Is this new? I think it's new and fancy. No, I think we did this at the end of the last stream. I don't know. Anyway, it's pumping out items. It's pumping out items. Items that we've got to sort. So, uh, last stream was very productive. And in my inventory, you'll see I've got some items here that I was planning on using, but I think we're going to focus on the next couple of things first, which is Ender IO and uh, this. Uh-oh. I AFK'd overnight again. Oh, God. Oh, dear Lord, I filled everything up. Almost everything up. Jeez, we've got to get on this quick. This thing needs some sorting out, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't even know where to start with this, but one thing I've noticed is that there are two different types of items coming into the same ender chest, really. We've got ores, and then we've got stuff like terracotta. So, really, our, our different resource miners should have a different ender chest. So, we'll... Uh, Start with that today. And we've got 12 of them. That's good. What was the colour coding over here? It was cyan. So maybe we'll use cyan with something else. Cyan and yellow I'm going to go with. Let's go uh, change that one down below over. Probably don't actually need another ender chest. Just need to change its ender chest, right? Uh, Stony says, hey X, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks for asking, Stony. How are you? I, uh, I'm still, I don't think I'm under, like, I'm not really under the weather anymore, but just still a bit snotty and whatnot. Yeah. Gonna, uh, gonna do a couple of workouts today, that's my plan. Smaller <laughs> ones. Get back into it already. So, now they're gonna go into that end of chest. That'll be our first means of separation. And what I thought we would probably need is a bunch of storage drawers to put those items into. The question is, where do we want to put those? I was thinking, maybe up here. We've literally got a bit of space carved out where this might be a cool place to display at least some of the items, right? So let's go to our storage drawers. I'm going to need y'all's help right here, okay? Definitely going to need y'all's help. Uh, we should make, we should get a table, we should make some, some custom drawers here. I think I'm going to go with that. I was thinking of doing the 1x4s, but I think we'll do the 1x2s. We will need a drawer controller. And one of the annoying things is that this is a long way away from our... You know, I got a weird feeling that later on I might end up putting everything into like one giant... Um, one giant compacting drawer set up or something. Because we're going to have to run a storage bus all the way over here now. Hey, and we got noises in the air. Thanks, peeps. But yeah, I need your help. <clears throat> Pixel Nomi says you sound a bit snotty. Thanks. I mean, even though I just suggested that myself, I still feel slightly insulted when reading it, which is completely my own problem. <laughs> um, I need some suggestions on textures to go in this area that would look super duper cool. I just lost my train of thought. Oh, storage bus. Uh-huh. Then we're going to need a bunch of cables to bring it over here. Uh-huh. And then we're going to need some basalt for the surrounding area. Uh-huh. And then we're going to need to say thanks to the peeps with the noises in the air. We got Skinbin here for five months. Says, any updates on when Hermitcraft will go to 1.18? Uh, not at the moment. Nothing to speak of, I guess. Oh, this thing is only, like, too tall here. I wonder if we could shimmy the pathway. Uh, there's no reason, actually, we can't just do completely our own thing. I think... Let's get some endstone blocks as a kind of guide. And I'm not going to do the whole randomization thing. I'm actually just going to put in this stuff. So, 
we can mirror what we're doing on the other side. Skimbin, thank you for five months of support. Salty B is here for six, saying six months. Haven't been here in a bit, but happy to be back to watch. Oh, welcome back, my dude. Um, if you haven't been here in a while, we have been absolutely loving playing some... Let's see. Some stone blocks. So, I think what we're looking at is something like this. Down to this level. No, what, how did I manage to misalign that when looking at it? So it's like that. So we're going to have a, an end stone path in this area. This is all end stone. It's not going to be glowstone. Now I'm thinking what we'll do to make sure we have the right sort of size here is break this up. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So it'll be at that level. I could even make it just glowstone if I wanted to. So there's light in here. Or maybe the glowstone will come from above. I'm not sure yet, but we're just marking out the parameters of the room. So that we can then build, build, build. Purple and gold is a real nice combo, says Devin Crates. Oh, so we could exaggerate the purple and gold block here. That's a very good idea. Uh, Mimi 17032001 is here for two months. Thank you so much, Mimi. Appreciate it. I hope you're uh, entertained, enjoying the stream today. And uh, thank you for coming by. Liger, thank you for gifting your sub to Arcade is Cool as well. Appreciate your support in our community with those gifted subs. I just have had another thought. That does look kind of ugly. And maybe, maybe it's not really a big deal that not everything gets displayed. Right? Like, we could just hide if we need more storage, some behind the scenes. Or, we could make what's in front of us a little bit bigger. Like, we could elongate. So, with that in mind, I'm actually going to pivot back to doing it this way. Uh, let's grab some factory blocks. These, I think, are going to end up coming into this space. Uh, maybe not. Oh, that's kind of not what they do over there, is it, at all? Actually, we use the purple blocks. Right, okay, let's ignore that. And then when we get to this space, it would be like that, maybe. Yeah, that would totally work. So that tells us where we can put our drawers. Which is here. And they need to be connected, which they'll do by going over the top with some trim. And I'm going kind of total overkill here, which is fine. In terms of removing space. Isabel90, thank you ever so much for your Prime subscription. Very much appreciated. Hope you're uh, entertained, enjoying the stream. Can't see the moon in the stone block world, says Becca. That is a good point. I wonder if the moon is bigger here too, you know? Is there static when X breaks blocks? Yeah, okay, so if there is, that is a continuation of this weird audio problem that we have. And I have no idea really where to even start trying to fix or diagnose that. You know what, actually? I've just realised, I think I might know why it's it's happening. Um, I'm AFK on Hermitcraft, and I've done that. I did that a while ago. I was AFKing on Hermitcraft when we had audio issues. That might be it. It might be because I've got two Minecrafts running that somehow they're interfering. That might sound a little bit odd, but it's a possibility. Anyway, it's the game audio, and it's not terribly important. I could also just turn it down a little bit, so it's less distracting. Oh, and I got a cup of tea. And we've been streaming for nine minutes. That is probably going to be premium. That's just made me so happy. You know, it's the simple things in life. Like remembering that you have a cup of tea before it's cold. Oh, and it's warming my hands up. My hands are freezing cold. I went for a really long walk outside this morning. And it was cold when I started and kind of cold when I got back. Like sometimes I go for walks. I mean, the summer it's hot. So you just come back sweating. But like 
autumn and spring. It's like you can go for a walk, you wrap up warm, and then you come back and you're stripping off layers. But like this time of year, it's just cold when you leave and cold when you get back. <sighs> oh, that's some good tea. Oh, that's some very nice tea. I was talking about running the uh, trim over the top. Digging that out up there was completely pointless, now that I think about it, because um, the trim would just run around the corners, right? So let's put our, our, uh, our drawer controller here, like we've done so many times before. A little bit of space behind it. And in here, we have this. We need a diamond. So, configure. And it's cyan and yellow in the middle. Should see some items. Aha. Uh -huh. These are the items that we're going to store over here. Now, we already create or get some of these items, so they're not going to be that big a deal. But there are other items that we don't get as well, so that stuff will be awesome. And we can potentially start to use it like terracotta, which is probably actually craftable. So, my line of thinking that we could do something interesting with that is redundant. Yeah, and this thing doesn't even need an upgrade at this point in time. It's uh, going to be very easy to work with. Right, so now we need the table. And we had the bright idea to go with gold and purple. Now I can grab gold blocks. I can then chisel them to our heart's desire. What's that there? No modifier. Okay, that can go back in. We'll chisel them to our heart's desire. When it comes to purplish blocks... Now, I could pick out the Insanium Essence block, but I think... Ooh, I'll tell you what, Voidstone might have... There it is. I could use those to show off. The problem with them is that they're not the nicest purple. We want a little bit of a brighter purple. What purple would you suggest, chat? Uh, Skelini says, I'm having a mental breakdown. I just got vaxxed on YouTube. And YouTube and my family thinks it is the mark of the beast. I don't want to go to hell. They said it contains a nano, not a microchip. Have you been vaxxed? I am so scared. I can't sleep. I don't want to go down in hell. Can you uh, explain to take away my fear? Sure, I'm vaxxed. Any other peeps in chat vaxxed? Just put your hand up. I'm feeling fine. I got vaxxed. Before all of this pandemic came down and it was a new and novel situation which everyone has to uh, interact with, right? And, and grapple with all the different things around it. I happen to have been relatively well educated on vaccinations, just having a general curiosity in medical science and learning about things like pandemic, influenza, uh, viruses before it became this thing that everyone has to wrap their heads around now. And so I understand it personally pretty well. And uh, I'm pretty comfortable with getting vaccinated. I have my hesitancies, which I'm sure many of us did. Again, new and novel situation, this thing coming out of nowhere. But I, uh, at one point I realized, hang on a minute, this is, you know, I might have my hesitancies here, but this is for the greater good. You know, I'm young and healthy. If I get COVID, it will potentially knock me over, but I'll get back up and... It's about protecting other people, essentially. <sighs> so, if I could direct you in the direction of some good educational content, um, there is a channel on YouTube called Crash Course. If you look up Crash Course and look for their videos on vaccinations, you can get lots of information um, about how they work, what they are, etc. I'd recommend uh, checking those out. And, uh, and then from there, you know, if other people around you are particularly unforgiving, you know, maybe keep that information to yourself that you're vaccinated. Um, it's, uh, yeah, if, if you're surrounded by people that have very different ideas, it can be very difficult. And if it's causing you anxiety and stuff, put your mental health uh, first, you know. Surprised he says X considered himself young. In the context of who's vulnerable, who's more vulnerable to COVID, I am young. Otherwise, I'm old. Girl. I remember when Limp Bizkit were big and famous. Girl. Back in the day. I mentioned that because today, YouTube recommended to me uh, a live concert by a um, 
a band called Biscuit Park. And when I saw that name, Biscuit, spelt with a Z, I was like, that's Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park put together. Who are this band? They come out on stage dressed in uh, gold and black Adidas trackies. And I'm like, this is like corn. This is like John Davis style right here. This is, this is like a new metal thing. And I thought they were going to be some new metal revivalist band perfectly bringing back that formula like it was 1999 again but like no they were a um, they were a tribute band but it shows you how the generational cycle is working that now 25 years have passed or you know 20 to 25 years since that all happened and now there is like a demand of audience for millennial kids who are now adults wanting to relive their youth a little bit and see some old uh, new metal songs played live, you know? And so they play all of it. They play Limp Bizkit, Linkin Park, Mudvayne, Slipknot, System of a Down. They play Korn. And, like, who's, who of my age who is into that is not going to go want to go watch them live? If, they, if they're on a festival bill that I want to see, I'm like, I want to go see all of my favourite new metal songs played. Like, it makes so much sense. I just thought it was uh, I just thought it was super interesting. Like I, I heard I heard about this um this cycle the 20 to 30 year cycle of um revivalist media if you like. And now I'm living for it. Now I'm seeing it happen. I'm seeing like lots of things from my youth sort of recirculating again as now the demographic of people who create media and have more power and sway in society. You know, and creating a demand for it as well. There's also that sort of like nostalgic, ah, oh, back in my day demand that comes back around. Armored Monkey, thank you for 41 months of support. Um, yay, thanks X for the many years of entertainment and thanks for mods. For always making sure the streams are enjoyable and safe for everyone. Yes, our mods do a wonderful, wonderful thing here. Can't thank them enough, can we? Chat, that's your cue to say thanks. Come on. Anyway, for the person who was... Uh, I'm just reading chat to see if they're still there. For the person who was uh, struggling with the vaccination stuff, look, go, go out there and look for... Um, information... Information about vaccines and... Uh, you know, medical science created before the pandemic is really great because... Now a lot of information around it is very sort of skewed as there's just so many people weighing in, right? Like I said, it's a new, it's a novel situation. Everyone's trying to grapple with it. Um, you want to sort of avoid very emotional kind of content. Like you want to look out for the biases and the, and the missteps that people take when it's like a, a big novel situation. You want to look for that more partial unbiased kind of information it's hard to figure out what that is but when you're when you look at things that are more like historical like looking back at the influenza pandemic tends to be less heated in that way because you know no one's no one's up in arms about what happened a hundred years ago right so like the outrage cycle and all of the craziness that you have to navigate that's the present so sometimes finding some historical content give you a good reflection like learning about the influenza pandemic because guess what back then they had anti-maskers you know and uh it, it's funny how people think of things that happen today as being just like oh look how terrible we are today but like it's actually just human nature though there's a lot of us if something happens we will somewhat somehow fracture and have different opinions on things yeah it was uh it started with like you know twitter a great source of information people on twitter are saying like oh yeah back in the influenza that pandemic no one was anti-masking and then some people went and looked it up and were like oh uh, yeah they were <laughs> uh yep that that happened there too because it was at the time it would have been like again a novel situation to be in that's when all the chaos emerges and you're right in the middle of it. And then when, when time passes, you can have an historical reflection of things when people care less about it now that it's passed and you get tend to get better information about 
things once they're over. Right, that's got a nice orangey colour of gold around the border, which actually I think is uh, that bit. Oh yeah, and then we need this. Uh, I've got them the wrong way around. Now, the thing across the middle looks really off, doesn't it? I think we might just... If we go one for one here, we are definitely going to need a bigger storage area. Hmm. But if we keep that bar across the middle, it just looks ugly. Let's see if there was uh, a similar favourable texture of gold that might be beneficial here. Just needs that consistency, really. Like a flat orange. Hmm. Speaking of which... It's not very golden, but maybe that would go. Also, what about endstone? A bit pale. Hmm. Or we could go for this, like, bronzy gold. What's the flattest of these textures? I think that one, probably. We chuck that on. Hmm. Nah, nah. Let's try that one as well. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, a bit more tolerable because it looks like a pattern. Oh, not that. Dang it. Let's, uh, let's see if we've got any orange or yellow-ish blocks. So we've got yellow wall. Ah. Oh, we got loads of that because we needed it for something. Okay, maybe that would look good. I kind of like that. That's kind of simple. Uh, I think that I think that totally works. I'm good with that. Right, one, two, three, four, and then five, five. So that would be fourteen, twenty-eight. think, I hope. And so, is it 30? Yeah. So 60 unique items we are storing here. I'm going to let the um, storage drawer decide where all of this goes, right? I don't want to be faffing around organising. And in theory, there is no reason why something hasn't been able to go in there already. Maybe it needs a bit of a, a kick. I wake up. These things are not locked. Oh yeah, we've got to install the trim as well. Which will be in here. And we've got very little of it left. Let's get that chiselled back to normal some of these things away. Nothing's going in. I think it just might need a little bit of a reset. That is a... Oh, it's a compacting drawer. Huh. Hi, X. I just asked my mum about it being why she thinks it is very suspicious and she thinks it is because it is so rushed and we should not trust the creator of the problem because according to her opinion it is part of the mark of the beast and my doctor told me to get it because I'm immu an immunine compromised person. After that, she yells at me like crazy. You know, if, you're, if your mother isn't going to be supportive about this, it is probably because of the sorts of information that she's been consuming that is leading her to see it in this perspective. And again, like, this is a big novel new situation, and I think having fears about it being rushed is perfectly fine. But, you know, the average person isn't inside the institutions that do this. And it's a sign of uh, eroding institutional trust. And in a novel situation like we are in, it's very easy for us to hyper-focus on one institution and then take for granted how much all the institutions give us in our lives, all the infrastructure that society has to keep it 
operating in order day to day. The things that we take for granted, like turning on the taps and knowing that the water is safe to drink, these are all parts of institutions that have been co-opted by society to be there. So it's the, the, the situation that puts the distrust on the institution, but I think we should uh, grant them, uh, you know, in this situation, a, a little more faith for dealing with it. And it's also, you can look at it like it's almost miraculous how quickly, how quickly um, these things have been put together to protect us. You're probably not going to be able to convince your mother otherwise. So, you know, maybe it's healthier just to keep some of these things to yourself. If they're not going to support you for it. Don't forget, this civilization is all one big experiment, says Mr. Stimulator. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can describe it as an experiment. I mean, it's... It's one big unfolding thing, and we don't have A-B testing, we don't have a parallel environment in which to... Ah, in which to... You know, what am I looking for here? I think I ended up making the wrong thing earlier. Where are we going? Uh, draw controller is what I was supposed to make, so I made the wrong thing basically. Which might mean that that compacting drawer had items in. I'm not sure. Either way, we'll find out another day. I think Veritasium did a video on how they were able to get it out so quickly, says Kalaninth. Uh, they're, they're a good science communication channel, but I don't recall them doing something particularly like that. Great source of information, Veritasium, though. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the other thing, like, time is on a scale as well, right? Like, if you look at so many things, they increase with time as society gets bigger, more people are involved, and what well, they call it, economics of scale, right? More and more becomes possible with time. So, you know, building a road used to take an extraordinary long time 200 years ago, and now we build them very quickly. Same for housing. Same for many things. Computers used to be slow 20 years ago, now they're faster. So our ability to do things within medical science increases with time. And one of these vaccines is made with the RNA technology. So there was like a new technology on the cusp of being utilised. And then they were able to utilise it, which may have been a contributing factor to why it got done so quickly. Here's another reason why it got done so quickly. Vaccines in the past have not been global pandemics. Um, smallpox and measles and mumps and all these other things, they're, they're less global pandemics and more problems that affect, you know, large populans, populations and whatnot, but are not affecting everyone all at once. So when something comes around that affects everyone all at once, is it not... Is it not uh, unsurprising that we could do things faster because the whole scientific community globally pulled together to help get all the data out to one learn how to deal with the situation and to um, develop not only vaccines but treatments and etc etc so the fact that it was a global problem meant that we had the opportunity for a global solution and what is all the manpower of our global community working together going to produce potentially a vaccine in under a year so you know a little thought and reason some of these things can be seen in a different light I'm not trying to say that I have the right answer I'm just offering a different perspective on that take there are other ways of um, thinking about it and I tend to prefer to lean towards positive ways although you don't want to just be naive and treat everything like it's possible as for the whole mark of the beast thing 
It's very biblical, and being a uh, an I'm thinking antagonistic. That's totally the wrong word. Sometimes my brain just delivers me the wrong words. Being an agnostic person, I can't really comment much on that because it holds no weight with me. Like I, I believe when I'm dead, that will most likely be the end of my experience. I'm not sure we even have proof that that's true. Consciousness could continue onwards in a, a different form, but you know, all there's nothing concrete in my mind out there that tells us exactly what happens after we die. And if I were to go on, you know, the words of religion, they are simply words recited by other people. And I think that people are fallible. And so, unless it's something empirical, you know, like mathematics and uh, good science, I, I just can't, I can't get on board with those sorts of ideas, really. So, for me, it being the mark of the beast, I don't know, those ideas tend to emerge when it lines up with your views, right? It's convenient that it's also the sign of the beast when uh, you don't agree with that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I don't have much of a strong take on it other than it's just not really for me. And Becca has gifted a sub to Sick Lenny. I think last time I read your name, I read it totally differently, like Sickly9. Oh, Sickly9, I think that sounds better. Sick Lenny or Sickly Nine. <laughs> uh, sorry for butchering your name. Thank you for gifting that sub, Becca. Very kind of you to do that. And uh, Sickly Nine, be sure to say say thanks in chat. I know you're going to already. I can tell. I heard uh, in a podcast I was listening to this morning. Right. Just a real kind of like wow moment for the whole uh, is free will an illusion thing, right? Which I've talked about here before. So I don't I don't really want to go deep on that like right now. But for those of you that have heard this discussion before, okay, um, here's just something to ponder over. I'm, I, I might say a few things on it, but just ponder on this, right? If I say two plus two equals four. Do you have a choice in understanding that? Because you just empirically understand it. I mean, at some point you have to be taught it, but... It's like you're presented with information and your brain calculates the answer, whether you choose to or not. You know, you can't sort of choose, no, nah, no, nah, equals five. You know it equals four, it's logic. It's pure, pure logic. So if you think of that as information coming in and your brain going four, you can see how there's a lack of free will in that, right? Like your brain just does that for you. And I feel like a lot of what I believe in is looking at most things like they are a form of information in, information out. Like your, your brain is the machine for all sorts of information. It's the turning of the wheels. Something like that. <laughs> what gives the most diamonds per hour? Digging in straight line or doing branch pattern? Uh, I would say, lazy Volpez, calculate that when you go in a straight line, you have to walk back again. So maybe going in a straight line for half of your mining time, going 10 blocks to the right or left, and then turning left again. Don't, don't turn right, then left. Turn right, then right, or left, then left. And come all the way back to where you started and then if you finish where you started that's a pretty efficient way to spend your time right um, what do you want next chat it is time for you to vote because we have two things to do today and we might end up just doing one I don't know so ender IO actually uh, what next is the name of the thing will we Oh god, my spelling is terrible today. Will we automate Ender IO or will we do the ore processing? These are basically the next two things we're gonna really like focus on, as well as doing RF tools at some point. So you get to choose five times ore processing with mechanism. I don't know how to do that.
And all processing is popular so far. I mean, Ender.io will be easier for me. I'll tell you that. Um, all processing, if I can sway the vote a little bit, might be a bit grindy, a little bit. Oh, what are we doing here? But uh, the vote is yours. you still got time to vote. Vote, people. Have your say. This is a democracy. Actually, it's a, it's a derp top, derp, derptocracy. Derpocracy? I think you can say derpocracy, right? And I'm not swaying the vote. My it, my my attempts to influence the vote is terrible. It's all processing as one. Well. There's no way that's going to change, so I'm going to just close that. Um, right, so I don't know how to do five times all processing. When I looked into it, I thought I saw a way to do four times all processing. So if we type in ore, let's say we just start off with uh, iron as a as one that is probably times fourable. So, um, hmm, am I clicking the right thing actually? Uses, there we go. So we've got the squeezer to double, smelting is one, and then this is 2.5. Crusher is two or something else. So mechanism, I know mechanism is the way to go for the bigger stuff. But it's probably going to be incredibly rabbit holy as well. Purification chamber. Right, that produces free iron clumps. That's something that we need to keep in mind. Flint is something we can farm indefinitely. Then we have the chemical injection chamber for four. Now, salt. That salt right there, there is two types. Can be used to create four iron shards. An enrichment chamber only create two iron dust. So then, looking at this other stuff, I think that's it. It's this one right here for four. Okay, if we go look at... Ooh, I just made a mistake. There we go. Go look at this. Um, yeah, not really understanding that. However, we can get it from sieving sponges. That's probably not a sustainable route. However... Oh! So a slime farm, plus a few other things. Or getting some essence to create sponges out of thin air. Potential ways to create salt. That one will probably be more fun, I think, creating a slime farm, etc. But I, I don't I don't want to go on a tangent. I think I want to make a slime farm later anyway for the fun of it. Uh, we want to we keep this pretty simple. This is what I noticed, right? Pot plus water bucket gives you salt. Do I have pot? No. I'm not a stoner. Right. Let's go look for the pot. Uh huh, and then water bucket. And what I think we're gonna see, what I think we're gonna see. Oh, I never, I never attached this, did I? I don't really need to, but anyway, right. Look at that. So obviously we can, with a variety of different ways, maybe use one of these to refill the buckets, or just fill it with a mechanical user. Shouldn't be too difficult to create salt out of thin air. What's the background music, says Boss Saeb? It's written on the bottom left of your screen. We're listening to Jim Kirkwood today. Some classic pre-Dungeon Synth, Middle-Earth-inspired fantasy music. Played on old-school synthesizers, you know? So, if we go to the uses of salt inside of a... Oh, it's not actually showing us. Uses of iron ore inside the chemical injection chamber which by the way has different levels which might have something to do with upping the amount of whatever anyway then you get an iron sh an iron <coughs> an iron shard uses of which are to then combine it with flint to get an iron clump in a purification chamber so flint needs to be added to the list as potentially another sustainable item we need the uses of iron clump is then to put it in a crusher to get your dirty iron dust. Uh, I wonder what happens. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, oh. Dang it. Okay, wait. I can press backspace, right? There we go. Dirty iron dust. The uses of which are enrichment chamber again for iron dust. So you can see how we would have a chain of things running the ore through. And I think it's the same amount each and every time. 
Right, anyway. If I got it right, peeps. Have I got the process right? Speed is important. You need to be able to... Able... You need to be able all that Void Miners produce. Hagmanon, that is a great point, and we will try and create a design that is scalable. What I'm picturing doing is maybe just uh, ditching this layout. I might even end up moving that over here somewhere. Like, we'll probably use this space here differently and try and create a module that's scalable. So if we need to increase the speed, we increase the amount of modules we create. That's essentially the uh, design philosophy here. And also we have a slight job to do. Because we want to bring this all the way over. To that back area. Ooh. Got some uh, space here I guess. My drawers are somewhere around here. There they are. Just trying to link these uh, spaces together more than anything. So we know where to go with our cable. Something like that. Going to need uh, some torches. That's for sure. And some white cable. Let's grab those. Torches, white cable. Uh huh. Oops. I think you have got on the basic ore processing idea. Now need to test it out, says the champ. Cool. So Valora says purification chamber, crusher, enrichment chamber in mech. Maybe the ore processing should be its own room, says Miola. Uh, I feel like this is one of those projects where I would like to do that. I would actually really like to do that. I, I guess it I guess it depends on what happens when we figure it out. If we figure it out and I'm thinking, oh, I can make this look interesting, then I might go in that direction. But for now, um, you know, this pack is very rabbit holy. You'll hear me say that a lot. And I keep getting sucked down rabbit holes. And I kind of just want to like tie up some loose ends. And this is one of those loose ends. Once we get this in place. We've got a few other things to do. And then we're going to sit at a point where it's like. Right we can open new projects. We're going to have tons of decorating to do. I am loving this world so much. I was actually, I've actually been thinking. I might want to do a modded series on my channel in the future. I've been thinking. If I, if I really really learn. Modded like we've been doing. Then it becomes a bit of a tool set. And God, the, the ideas I have to do things in this game, you know, on big scale and whatnot. It modded facilitates a lot of cool stuff, but the way people usually play modded, you don't you don't see that hermit craft base type of gameplay, right? And it, it's just got me thinking that we could do a really interesting series. So I think what you're gonna see from me now on is like a fair bit of modded. And then maybe one day I'll make a series on my channel or something. That's kind of where my head's at anyway. Right, anyway. Um, could do with a torch over here. Let's figure out where this thing is going to go. Torch there. I don't think any mobs will spawn around this spot, but we'll, uh, we'll keep it lit up. Okay, so we want to get... Ah... Uh, I was about to say slight problem, but maybe not. Let me get our storage bus up in here. <laughs> uh. Hey, we've got a noise in the air. It's... It's... Arthit0806 here for three months saying, Hey! Hey, Art Artit or Arthit. Not quite sure how to say that. Thank you for three months, my dude. Very, very much appreciated. Hope you're uh, enjoying the stream. Why are some hermits less active this year, says TGI Bells. Well, um, you know, not everyone has to be active, do they? Right? Like, there isn't a reason I could give you that's like, oh, it's because we uh, we passed the inactive act of 2021. Like, it's just probably personal, right? Like, think people have got things going on in their lives. 
I don't know who's expressed what they've got going on, but um, some people are public about, you know, if they've got various things holding them back or not, you know? It's not like something happened in Hermitcraft and now we're all inactive. It's not like that. Anyway, um, so that's hooked up. That's wonderful. That was that last little job to do there. Now we get to focus a little bit on our mechanism stuff. Which, by the way, needs a cable of its own now that I think about it. So we've got to do something similar again. Where we go down here and do some digging. And uh, pull up some cable, get some torches. So this one, I believe, is lime. By the way, uh, another little side note, I guess you could say. I've also absolutely been loving streaming. I've always enjoyed streaming, but... Um, I feel like we hit a groove with this series. It's been so much fun. I've been loving your stone block streams. Great change of pace after watching Hermitcraft episodes of Scouter. Yeah, that's another thing that's great about them, right? Is that they're just so different. That's been true of a long time, though. Like, streaming is different from my Hermitcraft videos. Which uh, I feel is like a, a good thing to have if you're a content creator. That you can have, like, two different paces. You know, two different types of things. So... When you come over here and check this out, it's like, oh, this is this is different because it's not more of the same. We love you streaming, says Becca. Ah, oh, I know, I know you love it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> your support has been just amazing doing these daily streams, and I'm really happy to keep going. We've got 420 viewers. Have a giggle. Oh, 420. Oh, <laughs> uh, peeps, if you haven't hit that follow button. Oh, 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 go on, go on, hit it. Jeez, you knew I was going to say that. Mm. Drinking some water there. And me and Macy says I'm calling the police. What have I done now? If I hit it again, it will make me unfollow, says Light Lightly Lucid. And then you can just hit follow again and get a little derpamine rush. And hit it over and over again. Right, serious business now. We got some ores that need quadrupling. It's a pressing matter. How far away is all this? There we go. We reached the end of that. Gosh. Yeah, notice how we had uh, lime on this side and white on the other. That was a deliberate thing. Also, when I made these, I was under the impression you could only have. 16 colours, as in like 16 channels. I would have picked some different colours because these are quite ugly. Anyway, there's some framework laid out for that. I guess you want to call it something. Right, so we've got a cable to come over to this area where we can set up our mechanism machines, which, <laughs> ironically, now that I think about it, um, this is independent. This doesn't actually use that system, so... That line that I just placed might be entirely pointless if we don't have any reason to connect it up. So, well done me. We'll need an ender chest, which means we'll need a diamond and cyan die. Okay. You know, it's probably good we did actually do this before we did ender IO, because... Ender IO is, like, not something where we've got a bunch of chests or crates lying around filling to the brim <laughs> uh, anyway right we're, we're ready to get going here so water bucket recipe uh, there's got to be a machine that fills up the water bucket and one that we can utilize to do that quickly so we've got a fluid transposer which can probably be upgraded for speed and then we can just use the uh, classic block we use to get that water condenser I wonder how fast or slow that is we could also use, maybe we'll use an Ender IO machine. I like the idea of upgrading this fluid transposer. This will probably be, I imagine there'll be a transfer speed that may slow this down. Because we, we actually want to produce this salt stuff really fast. But let's let's think of it as a challenge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it the Ender IO way. For the beginning. I just got a feeling that will be slightly more interesting. We've done a lot of upgrading machines. And so we're going to go with a fluid tank from Ender IO. And that means we need some iron bars. That should be a recipe. In fact, it probably is. 
but we're not using a recipe to create this, so... Uh, how many do I want to start with? Let's start with four. Then we need a sink. So we'll create one of those. Uh, we're obviously going to need a bunch of buckets. And we'll have to figure out how these get recycled. So we'll start over here. And we're going to try and just get a whole bunch of water processed. Now, I, the top ones are probably the fastest, right? And it needs fused quartz. Okay, I can actually go get a bunch of that. Do you upload VODs, says Bednap. Uh, all of the stone block VODs are available here on Twitch. That's just an experiment I'm running. I thought I'd leave them there. But they all get uploaded to my second YouTube channel, Asuma2. So on there you can find all the VODs of my streams, including this series. Etc, etc. Um, right. What did I come here for? I came here... Ah, I remember, I remember. Gotta stay focused. I need to meditate more, I need to sharpen my focusing skills. Yeah, that is the stuff right there. The fused quartz, we need that. I just realised something. We have two conduit recipes here. I don't know which one it picked. So when we put like two in the system, I think I think that is using I don't know how that's set up. I think it's using the recipe before it as well. Actually, I think I know why it's asking for so little materials. It's going to take the pressurized fluid conduit maybe. I'm actually not entirely sure. Like only 26. I guess you get 8 per recipe, then a bunch of binder quartz and a fluid conduit. So it is using the one before it, which means it's going further down the chain. I don't know. But we put in two recipes for each. So that makes me think... Let's put all of that in. That makes me think that only one of them gets chosen to be used there. But maybe the system is intelligent and can use both if there are the resources from one but not the other. I don't know. Does that make sense? Balance your chakras. <laughs> I prefer to watch the VOD on Twitch so I can rewatch the chat, says Dorva Lama. Oh, there you go. It's an option for you then if you want to watch it that way. Watching on YouTube is obviously better for me, but uh, watching on here, I just thought I'd run it as an experiment, leave those VODs there. I don't know what it'll do, but you know, why not? So we're going to extract on this side. Oh, we can put upgrades for speed in, even though it's a fluid. Never really considered that before, had I? I've been watching your streams on Twitch to avoid the insane amount of ads on YouTube, says Scout. Fair enough, there you go. Um, the ads run every 15 minutes, I think. Which, given how YouTube works now, I've got a feeling it should be a case... It should be slightly different. Um, it should be a case... Of you only get one or two ads per video. Like basically you put in mid rolls and it's supposed to only pick out a certain amount for you to to watch. But hmm, I don't know. I, I have YouTube Premium, so I never see how how it works. Oh wait, they're all inserting because the wait, the insert is on by default, or did I configure that myself? I think they're on by default. Uh, Neppy Place says, hi, I assume this is my first time watching you on Twitch. Just wanted to say hi. Welcome to the stream, my dude. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming and checking it out. Can't you put ads on Twitch VODs here? I was watching Impulse's stream and he had a bunch of ads. Maybe. Uh, I don't know about that. But I know that Twitch's ad rate payout is, like, basically appalling. To the point where I, I kind of wish Twitch would let us just disable ads. I don't know what that would do for their business model, but... The, the money it generates is so negligible, it just feels like I'd rather people just not have the hassle of watching the ads, but uh, that is unfortunately not a possibility. Uh, what am I thinking? Right, if we create two item filters, but we put them 
We put them in the other spot here. Yeah, okay, I'll explain that in a second. So I want two item filters, and we're going to put them in a different spot. These are, these are ones that are holding information, so I'm just going to reset them. And not have a repeat of uh, the mistake we made in the past. Adore the Lama says, alright, I guess I'll switch to watching on YouTube. More money for Greedy X. Hey, look, I'm just being transparent about how it works, right? Like, I, I've, I've left them on Switch as an experiment. You can watch them on Switch if you want to. Like, one or two people switching platform? I mean, not even one or two, hundreds of people. It probably doesn't make that big of a difference, right? Like, you know, sometimes you get messages like, oh, if I click the ads, will it help you? And it's like, yeah, I'll get, you know, 0.1% of a extra cent. Like, just uh, just do it the way you want to do it. It'll be so neg negligible across a big audience, you know, that just, uh, if you know, do what works for you. Right, now now I need an auto crafter, and immediately I'm thinking of that RF Tools crafter. So, uh, I guess I know what I'm going to use. It's funny, when I say it out loud, it's like, oh yeah, I want that. Uh, so, we'll take a tier one. I guess the others are configured. Slap it down here. Uh, four of these might be overkill. You're never too sure. So, we're going to... Did I, did I pick out my water bucket? There we go. Uh, so, it's over here that we're going to... Extract water buckets is how I see it working. So we extract that and then we insert water buckets. Okay. That's good. I'm not going to activate any of that just yet. In here, we're going to have that recipe for salt. It would be nice if some of this stuff would update. Uh got to put it back in there again. Okay, so we... No? No, apparently, is the answer. Result of the crafting operation will go into the output buffer. Stay in the input buffer. That might be the one that I want. So then I'm going to need to set up a filter here where we have nothing but water buckets. And possibly put some salt in the output to remember that. Ah. No, no, let's rethink this. Result of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer. But remaining items, like buckets, will stay in input. Both of these actually remain. So, there might be a, like, a quirk here. Result of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer. Let's apply that. I think we're going to have to run a test. And we need power for this thing. So... That's going to give it power. Right, everything went to the output buffer. And we need to do that because we need to get both salt and bucket out. So... This is going to handle the buckets. Therefore we need... Uh, one for salt. Hmm. I'm going to put that there. It's going to... Ah, dang it. This is going to end up looking a bit whack, I think. And may require, like, an alternative way of doing this. So I'm going to disconnect those two. It needs that. Because it kind of needs to self-feed a couple of times. So salt's going to come out this side. Let's get a crate or a chest or something. Small crate. Apparently it's small. So that's going to be the salt one. I guess we need uh, two more item filters. Let's put that right there. This one is for salt. And let's configure We don't actually have the salt here. Oh, it makes two each time as well. That's good. So that can extract salt, and then, then it will go on its way, right? We want one of these to... I wonder if you can extract and it's insert from the same node. There's also that self... Ah! Ah, we might actually... Let's try this. We might actually just need one side for this next bit. Because we could put self-feed on. So, 
if it'll instruct an exert on the same channel, we can self feed this. There it is, back in. How about that? I'm at 77.7k derp coins, says Devin Crates. Jason says 199 derp coin. We need more things to like bet on. That's like I want to bring back. Have a little bit more fun with the derp coin. Oh, Becca says it's easier to find bits for clips. Ah, oh, right. Well, that's, uh, I guess if we leave them on, then you can clip them and stuff. 4,009 derp coins. I wish I had a way to look up who has the most. That would be fun. I'd like to see. So if that's in there, it should, in theory, self-feed, which it just did, kind of slow. So we've got to consider upgrade speeds and stuff. This is where I think like having maybe a different block would be more interesting. X, there is below your stream. Not for uh, derp coins as far as I can tell, it's for other statistics. I'll donate all of mine to anyone if I could, says Monster Jack. I'm not sure you can transfer them to other people. They're deliberately non-transferable to avoid them actually gaining proper value because it's all gambling and stuff. Right, anyway, because then it would technically be a currency, I believe. So, we can extract those from over here. Let's enable this now, and we can insert these. So, if we have both... Uh, I think I got it the wrong way around here. Actually, no, no, maybe I haven't, because the it's on the insert filter. So, the filter is taking place at the opposite side. Right, anyway, we've got a stack of buckets. Let's put a stack of buckets in here. We should probably put four in rotation in total. So there goes that one. There goes this one. There goes this one. So now... Okay, have I set all of these up? Extract. We're being raided! Stellar Gaming 1, thank you so much for the raid and welcome all the raiders. Um... A yell from the Minecraft community, peeps, be sure to inform me. Thank you for the raids. We're playing some modded Minecraft over here, making a crazy contraption right now. Oh, I didn't put insert on, well that'll be why. Oh, and it might now be all set up to just make salt. We definitely want to configure this... Yeah, okay, there you go, look, some water buckets now start to accumulate. So we definitely need to configure... Uh, the layout on the inside. Okay, so I need I need the pot again, which was on page three, was it? Yeah, there it is. Let's get a bunch of these in there and see if it makes it run faster. Ah, it could potentially block the output. So there's several considerations here. Look at how much salt is in the output. So we need speed upgrades next. Yes, MC, says DOS Gamer Man. Cool, cool. So y'all be familiar with the Minecraft. Uh, do y'all want a tour of the base? See my modded Minecraft base? Because look, I'm literally just looking at a small thing right here and there's all this craziness going on around. Uh, so we're extracting, yep. And maybe this one too. Right, so look at how it's gotten backed up. Okay, so now what we need to do is refine this thing. So we'll put it on, on to activate. We're going to get salt. We're actually going to get these at a ratio of probably more salt to that, yep. I think I want to put the ratio of buckets to pots is basically one to one, but my gut says to have a little bit more room for the other stuff. Okay, so wait, make the pot again. One. A small tour would be appreciated to Zoke Duke. We will get on that then. We are going to just finish this contraption so that it'll sit here creating salt for us. Right, and I think that's that's potentially overkill. One thing that might help is doubling up the recipe. So, if I attach that with external and all over here. Okay, um, external, all, apply. Now it might be able to do it twice as fast. Not entirely sure. The one thing I'm missing is that we need a pot, another one, to go into the output. And I'm a little worried now that it could still get backed up because you need like a free spot. So I'm going to remember that and then pull out a pot. 
and it went back in. Literally what I was worried about. Okay, so now we're going to have it on to activate. And what's what's actually wrong at the moment? Is it the buckets? Extract and then... Oh, maybe I never turned these on. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. So... It looks to me like it could be going faster. Why is... Why is the salt... Oh, God, I made another mistake over here. Okay, and our self-feeding is working. Right, now it, now it kind of looks like it's actually running at an optimal speed. But that's probably the fastest it's going to go. So if that's the fastest that we can produce this stuff, then there you go. I think the bit that will need to be scaled up here is the crafter. Because these things can clearly handle the bandwidth we're throwing at it. So that's my conclusion on all of that. <laughs> and I could, I think I can put more buckets back into the system, but they probably don't need to be stacked up. So we're good. Uh, I am Relent is here with some cheers and bits. Saying, Raiders incoming, prepare the defenses. Yes, thanks for the raids. And thank you for the cheers and the biddies, my dude. Is that a mini dirt, peeps are saying? I d you know, I don't know. I kept messing up the filters, right? All right, so... Um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to explain every situation. This is our one of our latest projects where we have materials being mined from the void, which is a modded feature. So down here, we are due to decorate an area that has multiple uh, void or miners. And one of the things that we're doing right now is creating a setup that's going to deal with some of the items that come through here. And that just reminds me that some of those items will need to be filtered directly into our little storage area at the top. So we need to go attach another ender chest to pull out the materials that don't go through this ore processing thing. And they will go into here. That will be done with filters. Right, so this, this, this area right here is our machine room. It's one of our latest projects. Over on this side is where we're going to have our uh, mystical agriculture essence farming. It's going to be a vertical design. And we're going to decorate the walls. And it's going to be like a big um, sort of drop down into this crazy room. We could possibly expand it upwards too if need be and that's kind of a work in progress so whenever I need some essence I can uh, expand that farm here is where we have first start to hook up the automation of mechanism machines if you look at these configurations you'll see that we store materials down the bottom that need to go into the machines above and it's just going to have occurred to me that although we can store lots of these here we don't make them on demand, so it makes sense that they'll eventually run out. Now, for a different materials here, that's okay. What I might want to do is find a way to modify this so we keep a certain amount of compressed diamond in our system. So if I go in here and ask it to make, like, 400, it'll make 400. And now this machine over here turns on, and it's fully upgraded, super-duper fast, and starts... I say fully upgraded... Uh, this thing could do with a couple of extra spectral coils. But uh, we're, we're in the process of shifting things over to a power system. Uh, this one has already been shifted over. So we have a flux point bringing in power to a capacitor bank. And then shimmy it on to all the machines. And then uh, this one over here is now filling up with those compressed diamonds. Cool. So originally this project was going to be the machine room for automation. This is old school automation where we uh, pump supplies in and limit the amount of supplies based on drawers. So as soon as we use something it starts to fill them up again further. And as you can see most of these things are basically full. And that is using some grid power. Cool. So yeah anyway we decided not to do that anymore and to do things the AE2 way. So the whole room got expanded. Opposite, we were going to have a project here that goes to the void, but at the moment, it's uh, not really a thing. We've got our portal room to the end dimension. And then we have our mystical agriculture farming room that has a big array of uh, of crafting stuff back, back here, like crafting seeds and all the different essence levels, which some of them I want to start upgrading again, but uh, maybe, maybe we could actually put one on or two right now. Let's go grab some upgrades. Uh, 
I think I'm just going to go for some twos here. Because I kind of want to have a little bit more of this. Oh, maybe I should go a bit higher. Actually, what I'll do... What I will do is pick out the eight, right? So go in here. No, nope, that didn't do it. Go in here to the eight, put that in, and then maybe take out one, two, three, or four even? Stack limit eight. Why did... Hmm. I feel like I shouldn't have been able to take out that last upgrade. Now it's ten. I shouldn't have been able to take out that last upgrade. Yeah, let's, let's just take these up to twelve for now. That'll do. Anyway, that, that'll slowly just fill up with those extra materials. Right, so coming into the main area of the base, which is this room by the way. Uh, back here we got trophies, portals, and automation projects for various materials. On the left we got our basics of AE2, automated the old school way where things are kept in large supply. If you look at the top of the screen you'll see that we have large amounts of materials in reserve. And uh, one of the, again, another little loose thread we have to finish is this. Because it frequently fails, although at the moment it seems to be okay. Anyway, lots of automation over there. This spot is kind of unfinished again, and it goes down to our mob farm at the bottom of the world, which is an absolute monstrosity of high-speed mob murdering. Except at the moment it's disabled, and... Uh, yeah, when I fly around, I realize how many more unfinished projects there are. It's going to be a streak of streams in order to wrap a lot of this stuff up. Um, this is the Ender.io automation area, which I've been struggling to get into, but we will start this soon. Uh, all we've done so far is get the mystical agriculture set up to make sure that we've got all of these different materials available. The next step is to start automating in this area. Now, the central bit is for storage. We have a diamond chest full of random items. As you can see, there's loads of crazy stuff in here. And above it is the beginning of our AE2 network, which has all of these cables going out. You can see how many channels are being used when you look at these, which is really cool. Uh, on this side, we have far less channels being used. And same is kind of true of this side. And again, actually, this one here is pretty unused. So we'd probably be wise to expand our projects in these directions in the future as not so many AE2 channels have been used over there. Um, this is a, a like a, a die farm so we're going to upgrade it so you can turn on the dies individually at some point and maybe even automate that. Oh that's a great addition to the project so we could use AE2 to automate when it makes the dies so they can turn on automatically as we use them to keep, keep a threshold. This is our deep dark um, teleporting room, just a little visual project here, just, you know, kind of cool atmosphere. This is our loot bag opener, which slowly turns loot bags into never stars. We have 567, and it will just continue to do that constantly, pretty much. Um, if ever we have loot bags coming in from our mob farm, nether portal over here, by the way, uh, they will get brought over here. So this is a loot bag opener for regular loot. And then there's tons of items being stored over here as well. Okay, and then we're at the beginning area now. Uh, two projects we did after the beginning area was the creation of witch water for the automation of other things, cobblestone generators. But this is the very first room that we put together. It has uh, bonsai tree farms for woods and sticks, magma generation to create the power for all of these sieves, and then we have our processing system right here which constantly funnels metals into this ultimate furnace and then over here we have another mass sieving setup to create more materials which all get funneled into this space hey the puka welcome to the stream my dude i saw you were streaming i was hoping to raid you but uh i imagine you've probably been streaming for hours and now i'm streaming for hours and and uh yeah otherwise i would have been happy to raid so yeah, what, how are we doing here? We've got a full stash of quartz at the moment. And soul sand is slowly filling up. I would like more quartz in our system. So we are going to put in an upgrade. I think I'm going to go for another four on that one. As it's only got eight at the moment. Uh-huh. There we go. So now it will store 192 instead of 128. Cool. 
So that's, that's just something I do, by the way. I, I wander around the base, I look at things, and I think, oh, let's get a bit more of that stashed up now. Because it slowly generates them over time. Okay, so you've seen... Alright. You've seen most of the base, but there's more. There's more. Just gonna, uh, just gonna pop over here. Oh. Just got logged out of Hermitcraft. Um, so over here... Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, well, wait, wait. <laughs> I went the wrong way. Sorry, this is the guts. This is the, the under part of the base. Uh, over here we go up. And... Check it out. Crazy, crazy room that's unfinished. This is where all of our auto-crafting takes place. We're going to have towers of auto-crafters all the way around the room. And then we've got our processing CPUs behind it. And it's just been designed to be deliberately crazy to look at. And I think what's going to be my favourite project of the whole place will take place up here. Where we're going to build our control room to control all the different things going on. Have an overview of how many materials we have, etc, etc. Now, power for the base is being created up here. We have a, uh, a chunk that's been dug out and tons of solar panels feeding a massive capacitor bank and then a couple of outputs to send power around the place. Dang! Gotta love it, right? Crazy big project. So if you enjoyed Watch Your Shore, be sure to hit that follow button here on Twitch. I am very keen to tie up a lot of these loose ends at the moment. So it's like we're doing the ores, we're doing Ender IO, and then after that it's all the loose threads and then the control room, I think. X, what are those dark blocks in the control room? If you're on about the ones on the floor, I think they're from Tyrion. Right, now the speed at that that's coming out at I don't think is fast enough for our needs. So I think this needs to be scalable. Which to me says, if you had four of them together cloned, you can have four inputs on the side, four outputs on that side. Another alternative is to actually use this output to also output salt, but let's say we keep it separate. Then you need each block to have a self feed like this and power, and there is enough sides to actually do that. So this little clump of like four and four, it doesn't it doesn't look very impressive down on the ground. I think what I want to do, because now I'm starting to think, okay, it's rolling. What are we going to do aesthetically? There is scaffolding, right? I want a I want a scaffolding like that, and I if I remember correctly, this stuff is uh, not too difficult to make. There are different types as well. Oh, covered ladder. Hmm. Let's take the steel scaffolding. Uh, Got to make the rods. That's the one. Steel rods. Uh huh. And now we've got tons of this. So what if we use this stuff in this area? Let's grab uh, grab the old breakable ones. So its texture doesn't sort of stack, which is kind of a bit of a... It sort of seems good, but maybe not. So what if we used it like this? still looks a bit odd to me but it's honestly it's not actually the best texture and I kind of feel like the top layer probably needs to come off it's a bit too high it's a good texture but maybe not the best what other was there in the way of scaffolding it's really a case of color there's also this hmm and that but I think what suits the room best is probably this one. And uh, how do we make that? Yeah, I think you just cycle it through. So you take that, do that, take it again. Okay. What do you think, Peep? Should we use some steel scaffolding for this project? And again, I actually think maybe too high is the best. 
remember, machines are going to sit on top of this. Yeah, that's what we're going to use. That is what we're going to use. So, I kind of want this steel scaffolding to start. I um, don't know if I actually want to... I, I don't know how much space we're going to use going in that direction, right? So, let's be space efficient. It's going to be too tall. The blocks on top need to be the other type. It's going to be four across. Yeah, it's going to be like that. From the corner over there. So we're going to move the stuff we're building on top of it, basically. When I go over this thing and I shift... That is confusing. Just saying. Does the pick not collect the items you break, says Nate. Yeah, it does. It picks them back up. Or well, the pick doesn't. My magnet does. So uh, we'll have we'll have two of them here just to make it look good, right? What I would like is that synchronization again. Oh, I've been kicked off a of hermit craft again. What's going on there? Uh, right. Two of those. Over there. And then the next bit. Which I believe required no real configuration, so all of that comes off. We move the tanks up, which, you know, everything's currently, like, Processing, so let's go and on to activate. So this thing has essentially frozen for the time being. This might be where it's a good idea to. Uh... Ah, what's it doing? Is it. Where are those going? Oh, do you know what? They might, they might be getting shuffled around because it can extract and insert without a filter. Oh, that might be something that's slowing it down. Okay, so that's a, that's a it needs fixing thing. Let's just break that for now. And do this. Cuplex says I'm here again. Welcome back, Cuplex. We're doing all quadrupling. And hopefully we're doing it correctly. So if you have any input on what we're doing, it is most welcome. Okay, these will be filled to the brim of water now. Look at that. Beautiful. Right. When it comes to this bit, we have our item filters down here. Oh, this inventory again. A little bit on the messy side. Uh, what do I not need right this second? Don't need those. That's probably about it, really. Probably don't need the chisel. And the torches. Cool. Right, because I want to rip out that. And i just got to remember we are extracting... So, okay, yeah, yeah. And we need more item filters now, don't we? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Using a different mod, if I had a bit more knowledge of some of the other mods, might have made this easier. Because these Ender I.O. conduits, they, they do get a bit finicky. They're powerful, but like there's a lot of configuration going on. Okay, now we need uh, multiple Tier 1 crafters. So we've got a Tier... There we go, Tier 1s. Let's take that and let's reset these as well. These are going to go up at this spot. I'm going to place them like so. That's kind of not how I wanted to place you. And again, kind of not how I wanted to place you. How about that? I think that's the one. And then the last one is down here. It can be a bit tricky to place blocks in this game sometimes. Right, let's bring our scaffolding across. So we need this space down here. And we also need a spot to bring in power 
both above and below. So I think we're going to have two flux things. Where did I extend it there? So we'll have like capacitor banks with flux nodes on either side. Then we need um, some disconnected... Okay. How do I... That one, I think. Yeah, some disconnected nodes above and below. Uh-huh. And then we'll need our things to connect into some sort of storage. So when it comes to those scaffolding blocks... I'm going to put them like that, I think. Whoops. Hey, we got a noise in the air. It's Becca gifting a sub to Camo. One, one, two, three. Thank you so much. Camo, appreciate it. Sorry, I'm getting distracted because I get kicked off a of Hermitcraft again. I'm just going to uh, I'm just gonna close it because something's going on over there. Uh, sorry, thank you, Becca, for gifting the sub. Camo, be sure to say thanks in chat. X, do you know the cakes can help you with your hunger? Um, no, they can't because they've got zero saturation. So they'll just make you continuously hungry. I mean, they very briefly help, I guess. But uh, cakes are a pretty pants source of food. Yeah, alright. So, lots of configuring to do, right? I should probably uh, do this. And I think... Okay, let's check out what's going on inside each of these, because two of them look like they had recipes or something. So let's remember, it's external, all, and apply. So, got lots of grinding now, just constantly. All, external, apply. All, external, apply. It didn't work, you have to double click. Couplex 6, X, I believe there are other ways to get salt. There is a passive salt collector thing from Pam's Harvest Crafts. Forgot what it's called. Salt also comes from another machine, I recall. Right, yeah, we looked at the ways and I felt like this one was the one I liked the most. Um, yeah, there are other ways to get salt. But we're doing this one. So, uh, you know, got to pick one of them. Let's try again. Hey, there we go. So if I get this right and just go through it doing one at a time, we can figure it all correctly. I uh, didn't like that one. Then we're good. Oh. Oh, wait, that's the other salt, isn't it? So, you get the grinder block, seaweed, salt, and veggie bait. Yeah, but I didn't know what these were, so I skipped over those ones. Nope. You can see, sometimes it doesn't... Why doesn't it want to do that? A bit annoying, really. There we go. Now, it's, now it's like, okay, then. Cool, so that's all of those configured. Miola says, I feel like having... The recipe the same twice might not increase the speed. Are you sure that helps? I'm not. It was just an experiment, but uh, you know, it's there. I'm going to switch to seating now for a bit, peeps, for a little bit. Oof. Please, Twitch, stop changing the resolution, says Crossline. I believe it will change. Based on your uh, connection, so if you have a poor connection, it will uh, it will change. I think he says I'm always happy to hear Kirkwood on stream. I'd love to hear some more exams on here. Well, you see, the music of his that I really like is the older stuff, and the newer stuff, um, the ones I've listened to haven't really like clicked. So, I'm kind of waiting for some of that older stuff to get uh, re-released, and I'll be all over that. Right, this is where we need more of those filters, right? Because we need to insert only buckets. Ah, this is where I also need some items in my inventory. Uh, 
Uh, what are those blue blocks in the inventory, says Cuplex. These are from RF Tools. I, I prepped to do a little bit of a different project, and then when I went to stream today, I realised, uh, we really kind of need to do this one first. Oh, did I set that up yet? Oh, look at that. It had salt on it. Got to remember where that goes. Obviously didn't pick out a uh, fresh one. So it should be now that only those can go in there. Very cool. Uh, the extraction will be fine because where we insert on the other side is where we have a filter for a water bucket. Yeah. On the insert. That's right. Which means... Actually, let's not... Hmm. I do need to get water buckets inside of the machines. It's going to get messy. Let's put in our pots first. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, this is all getting messy now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, double clicking to stop working. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And JC on Gaming, thank you for gifting a sub to Crosstime. Appreciate it. Crosstime, be sure to say thanks in chat. Okay, the first three were buckets, not that it really matters. Yeah, thank you for gifting that sub, my dude. Very much appreciated. That's part of the whole setup right there. So now, once we do these, if water buckets go in next, we'll be good. This is, uh, this is one of the things that's a little disappointing in modded sometimes, is that you end up just having to configure a lot of machines, and it's like kind of grindy. Be nice if there were a way to configure this better. Anyway, got our eight pots there. We should make sure all of the uh, things are off as well. Like down here, so on to activate on all of them. And fast mode, I guess. Whoops. And there you go, eight of those are now in. That one needs to be in fast mode. Oblex111, thank you for the prime, my dude. Hope you're uh, entertained, enjoying the stream, having a good time, all of that good stuff. Appreciate you using the prime on me. So now I think these are all ready to insert, and I don't think they need configuring. Because... Oh no, wait, wait. Something needs... So we need a set of filters either side. Like, you can even put them here or there. But we need filters, so let's go enable this, because it has to extract a particular type, right? Which is not that, but this. And then we can enable. And then it will start to fill some things up. Very cool. Uh-huh, then we can enable it. Might be worth putting a good old round robin on it as well. And there it is. Uh, did I do round robin on that one? No, there we go. Right. Ah. Huh. Yeah, so we don't need that. That's what I was on about. Like, you can... So the filters are on this side, meaning that the insert and the extract, um, basically they don't need configuring now. All of these look good, very good. So let's set it to mm, actually no. Let's keep it. Let's keep it inactive for a minute because we also need to set up these and get an output in here. Hmm. Hmm. Right. I know that what we oh there you go. We could do it that way perhaps. 
That's very helpful that we can do that. So I do that, and then I remember the layout. And then we can take back these things. Nice. And then just do the rounds on that. That's the last thing that needs doing for configuring these machines, I believe. Remember the layout, take them back out. This track is so atmospheric, says Becco. It's great, isn't it? The, uh, the sound of the horses reminds me of uh, Baffery. A fine day to die. What a legendary song that is. And the Emperor cover of it. Oh, perfection. You know, you know how covers, like, sometimes a cover song can be better than the original. Sometimes you like the uh, original more. Sometimes you don't like either of them. <laughs> Sometimes both are great. This is one where it's like, you can't, you can't really just say one's better than the other. They're just both, like, absolutely brilliant. Okay, so... Just going through things one by one. I think what we'll do next is set up the self-feed extract nodes, which need to have the pot on them. And then we'll go ahead and enable that. Uh, Self-feed mode. Whoops, I need that back. Thank you. So that's those two done. Did I enable it on that one? And let's see. Um, we need you to have the pot in it. And we need another item filter now. Self-feed and that. Let's just double check. Yep, all good. Right. Need more item filters. Sweet. We'll have a few of those. I'll do the bottom ones. Oh, we did that, did we? So it's just this one. Okay, it's got the pot. We shall do that. Self-feed. Right, this is all good. Next we need power. And then we need extraction of the salt. Which will need a filter. But we'll probably put an insert filter as it's going to go to a... Right, now, chat. Need your help. I want to put these things... Oh, I think I already know of an answer. Chat, don't need your help. Shut up. Stop talking. Stop talking. Chat, you think you're helpful. You're not. I've got all the ideas. Yeah. Chat, help me out here. Um, I want to put a structure block of some sort that's like either too tall, two by two, basically, but storage. Ow, that hurts, says Camo. Grow some thick skin already. Gah. No, we're not helping you now, says Becca. Uh-oh. Oh, my jokes are backfiring. Um, we need a like a two by two storage solution. I kind of realized we can just use drawers, right? And we can... Have them facing inwards, put custom textures on them so they look all technical. Is there another solution? Is there a connected chest block of some sort that might go there to make a 2 by one that stores tons of it or not? Don't help. Okay, well, don't help this man, they say. Cool, all right, fine. That's it. I rebel. Uh, we could use some Ender IO blocks again, I think would end up looking pretty good. Maybe there is, but I won't tell you, says Lucro. God. Just rude. Just rude. <sighs> right, uh, how about... I think you can type in decorative, yeah, and then up come these. Nope. Hey, we've got some of those. This is where having the auto-crafting stuff would probably be really good. I only need four of these anyway. So that's going to be my panel block. Then it's like, what do I put around the... A chest of free dirt blocks. Great. Jason says you told us to shut up. And you all started talking more. That's all I have to do. I go, chat, shut up, stop talking. And y'all y'all get crazy. You fall for it. Oh. Chat don't know how to be silent. Right, chat. Let's all agree. No one's going to talk in chat right now. No one's going to type combo breaker or breaking the silence. Look at me, I'm a rebel. See, look, still can't do it. Everyone's still chatting. Bunch of fiends. Bunch of chat fiends. 
Oh, oh, I need to type on my keyboard and say something. The world needs to hear me. I wonder how long I could sit here waffling and insulting all y'all, and you'd still keep typing in my chat. Oh, I know what you're like. I think that hardened stone might have the right edge. Uh, what other sort of block? Iron block, this block, that block. Becca says, what's that noise? Sounds like someone's talking. What's that noise? Sounds like someone's typing on their keyboard. Oh, I knew you'd type in my chat. I knew you'd type in my chat. Oh, look at us. We can use emotes. Oh, we're not talking. We're using emotes. Still a bunch of fiends. Still a bunch of fiends. Right, I need some uh, frame drawers now. <laughs> uh, it is fun. Framed drawers is what I need. Not drained drawers. Oh god, I can't type. So that'll hold a lot of stacks and be upgradable if ever for some reason we'd need that, which I can't foresee that we would. Let's get in here with our four of these and our four of those. That looks good. One, two, three, four. And we'll put those back as well. Ha! Right. So now we've got frame drawers. I kind of like the way... I kind of like the way the scaffolding gives it a... Oh, that's interesting. If I take out these two blocks here, you get like a little more texture around the edge. Which I think is quite good. Okay, so then I need somewhere to place these blocks. Well, that's clever. One, two, one, two. So that is going to face inwards as for this will. And now we have our technical looking storage block thingy. Cool. I should use the conduit probe a little more, shouldn't I? That looks good, X, says LHFR Gamer. Thank you, my dude. It's looking alright, isn't it? So this also means now that we need four extract modules. I have the filter for salt. And we'll, we'll round robin it so that it'll potentially distribute. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Round robin. I'm just, I'm just configuring item conduits over and over again for an eternity. Now, if you can con copy a conduit probe... So oh, we have to try this because it's just so simple to try. Put that there. Right, I have a filter in my inventory. Is it going to intelligently be like, let's copy that filter and set it up for you? No. <sighs> Bad news. Doesn't do that. That would be amazing if it could do that. That would be like really, really cool. Anyway, now all of these ones are set to insert. And we're very close to getting going. I say we're very close. We're actually not. We're really far away. And I'm just going to realize something. The texture that I've used is sort of like the capacitor bank. Which is actually a bit of a bummer. Because now, now it looks more Ender io -y, but whatever. Or I could put the capacitor... Oh, I could do this different if I wanted to. I could have the capacitor banks down at this level. Which might make the structure look more interesting. Which is typical me. Just everything aesthetic. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. So let's actually have that down at that level. Oh, wait. No, this creates... Uh, kind of creates a problem, but not really. Technically, I don't need the capacitor banks at all now to feel about, think about it. Let's go grab a conduit for energy. Uh, these ones, just using the max. Then let's get a couple of points. Okay, so we have conduits on the side as well. Making our contraption look even more marvellous and technical. Ah, look at that though. It looks a bit funky. Looks a bit funky monkey, doesn't it? Wonder if we can make that look a little better somehow. I think I know, actually. Let's uh let's rip this out. OK, 
Okay, shimmy that down there. Shimmy this over here. Now the flux point point will connect two ways there. And then the capacitor bank will power the machine. So now we just got to hook this up to the network. Machine power! For that machine power. And now you can see it's filling up the capacitor bank at the moment. And that means that this is fully powered. That's fully powered. Right, let's go. Everything should work, right? I haven't missed any steps. Maybe I should have double checked. Probably should have double checked some things. Okay, immediately nothing happens. <laughs> oh no! Wait, 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 wait. Aha! Didn't quite set those up. Now are we all good? Oh, now we're good. Interestingly, the speed at which the water buckets are arriving, which is here, is not good enough. Can I put in... Will this influence that at all? This is where it might have been better to not use round robin and just have it go like one for one. Yeah, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make some modifications here now. So, oh, there's a lot of options, isn't there? If I do that and turn off round robin, then it's just going straight back and forth. That might mean it goes a little faster. Not sure though. Okay, it's starting to fill up with buckets. It's got what looks like an equal-ish distribution. Not quite equal, but it's working. What's now slowing it down? Buckets are coming in. It's got what it needs to create the salt, but it's not making any. What am I missing there? Is it... Oh, wait. The cell feed is... The cell feed is all enabled. But... That is not going back over here. And that's what's slowing it down. Now, they all stopped doing that together. It's set up... To self feed. Does it... Oh! Does it also need that then? Isn't it weird how it appeared to be working for a minute? And then it stopped. Like, oh, it's because it ran through all the buckets originally. And now this one stops again. What? <laughs> it's like I keep fixing it and then it keeps sort of breaking. Weird. So anyway, we've established now that it needs those. Then it runs through all the buckets. But now it seems to run rather slow. Which, I'm not really sure why it would. Oh, maybe it's just running at the max speed of this. Ah. Uh, that could be a bit of a problem, really. Because that means this bit here actually needed to have been scaled up for this bit. So I made a mistake there. And we can actually scale it up a little bit. Let me show you how. Right, we need another four tanks then. We need more tanks and more filters. Gah. This is all for salt. We haven't even started with the rest of it, peeps. One, two, three, four. So this is me doubling the speed. And potentially tripling it if we really need to. Uh, not that. I need buckets next. We need four stacks. Put them all into these tanks. Cuplex. Yeah, the quadrupling requires hydronic chloride, but he gets that from just inserting brine into a machine instead of infusing water with salt. Um, the way we looked at it, salt was the starting block of everything. Anyway, there's always multiple ways of doing stuff. Like, we just picked one and now we're rolling with it. If I were doing the other one, you'd probably be telling me that I should be doing salt. I know how this works. Okay, um, so, yeah, look at this. Water extract. 
If I just shift it in, it puts that's that's pretty that's a good little trick right there. One here, one there. If I ah, oh, dang it. There we go. Uh one here. Enabled. This one will now run twice as fast. Which is not a huge upgrade. It sort of doesn't even feel twice as fast. But compared to that, clearly it is. Okay, so got to do the same thing again. And then got to manipulate all these cables. Go in here, shift those in. Water bucket, uh-huh. Empty bucket, uh-huh. Enable, enable. That will double that machine. God, so much effort. Ah. Ah, no, 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 wait. How, how is that machine running twice as fast? It was running twice as fast, wasn't it? It's clearly running twice as fast. That one's now running at the same speed. This one's running slow. This one's backed up. Oh, it has one too many pots in it, maybe. There you go. One too many pots. Right, now what speed does it run at? I think it's running at the same speed. So we didn't actually increase the speed of this yet. Because it needs more conduits, right? But I think what you can also do... Ah, oh, no. What are we doing here? Can it can't it push the liquid into the one above it? I don't think it can. Oh, all right then. Oh, all right then. Never mind. Now we need these. Endless configuring, eh? Endless configuring. Right, now that really will be able to run twice as fast. Even though it seemed like it already did. I feel like I'm not seeing it in action just yet. Oh, what did I do? No! Get rid of it. What do you think, peeps? I don't know. This whole system's like... Doesn't feel like... That, sh that should be running faster, I'm sure. Oh, there you go. It blinks twice now. So it is running faster. Hmm. Anyway, it works. There might have been a more elegant solution, had I known. But, uh... It'll work. So, insert over here. Insert over there. That's just what we want. Here... It's a different game. So put one there and disconnect. Put the other one in and disconnect one extra time. Okay. Oh, configuring. Right. Extract buckets. Insert the empty ones. Enable, enable. Good. Wait a minute, I disabled too much stuff. How do I re-enable that then? Oh, like that? Good, good, good. Uh, right, over to this one. Water bucket. God, we're finally there, peeps. Finally there. There you go. So, now what do we have? Salt being produced. By a crazy contraption. And there's many stacks of it about. Uh, if I break this thing, does the salt drop? It does. Good. Because, uh... Oh. Oh! Well, in that case... Oh, God. It doesn't even leave, let me move it over easy. Dang it! Why well, I'm always making a fool of myself when I play this game. How does this happen? 
Now all the salt is awkward and difficult to put away. I'll tell you what I should have done. I'll tell you what I should have done. Oh, God. Oh, no, what a buffoon. Let's put it back in there. In you get, in you get, in you get. Let's just have that. Uh, and little do open that. That'll soon be gone. Oh, right. Thank you. So what comes after this, peeps? What comes after this, now that we just spent an hour making a bunch of salt? This is where the next part of the fun arises. Not that bit. In fact, it doesn't actually appear. We have to go to the uses of the iron ore. Remember, we start off with uh, one machine and then it goes through a bunch of others. So chemical injection is where we put the salt. And you see this basic gas tank that's got hydrogen chloride in. That's what Cuplex was referring to. Except when I click on it, it doesn't actually give me anything. So, chemical injection chamber. Oh, purification chamber. Enrichment. Oh, God, rabbit hole. Rabbit hole alert. Rabbit hole alert. Sound the alarms. The rabbit hole is here. Peeps. We're going to do that on the next one. I'm going to log out of the world because our resources... Actually, I'll tell you what. I will come on here and do a little bit in between streams. Yeah, our resources are backing up. I got an idea of something useful to do in between. But uh, we're going to tackle the rest of that challenge in the next one. That is all I have time for today. So I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who subscribed, resubscribed, donated and cheered. Thanks to all of my patrons and all the peeps gifting subs. You're all greatly appreciated. And uh, right now... We shall do a riggedy raid if it would turn on for me. Uh, I'll send you over to Stress Monster who's playing some Minecraft. Doing the modded Minecraft. Cool. Alright. Hit that raid button. Hit the follow button. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye bye.